In this quick video, we'll dive into Figma to create a cool spinning carousel effect. In just a few minutes, I'll walk you through the steps to improve your prototyping game. Let's dig in. But first, it's coffee time. To make this all work, we only need Figma and a couple of free Figma plugins. And as with every design we want to animate, the first thing to figure out is the composition. And with this one, it's pretty simple. We want to have a number of images spaced out on the elliptical path. So let's see how we could do it. And we could do it manually by just drawing an ellipse here and then adding a number of frames or like rectangles with the images on top of the uh, circular path. But this would be very tricky and hard to calculate the exact uh, placement of these images and their rotation on the uh, path itself. And there's an easier and more automated way to do it ourselves. So let me show you how we would do it otherwise. So before we go ahead and create our path and our rectangles, we need a frame. So let's hit F on our keyboard and choose a desktop frame. And um, now that we are here, we want to change the fill to let's say something uh, kind of orange-like. And now we might as well add a header. So let's click T on our keyboard and start with a logo first. So um, we can use a just a text for a logo. And this will be our logo here. And let's copy it over and then create a couple of pages. So um, I will wrap it into a auto layout container and then select my text and hit Command plus D a couple of times to quickly duplicate my text layers. And let's say we want to have a pricing page, a product page, an about page, and a contact page. And um, let's select all of the elements that we have sitting in that frame. And then let's reduce the size to, let's say, 18 and the weight to medium. Uh, let's go back to the frame and then increase the spacing of the elements sitting inside to 40 pixels. And we can also wrap our links into an auto layout container just to add some breathing room around the links and to make them much easier to tap. Uh, so that's about 44 pixels and it, um, let's increase it by adding two pixels of padding on, on uh, both top and bottom just so they fill about 40 pixels of height. Now the last thing we need is the call to action so let's select our contact uh, link and then shift option drag it out change the text to get started and for this, we want to change the fill of our text to white. I will add a fill of black to our container. Let's add a horizontal padding of 24 and then vertical padding of 16 and make sure it's sitting it's center aligned and then add the corner radius of, let's say, 12. Now let's select all of these elements, hit shift plus A to add a container. And we also need to wrap this container into another frame and this will be our header. And for our header, we want to have it a fixed width, which is the size of our frame. So 1440, uh, make sure it's center aligned and the horizontal padding is set to 96. And the container spacing is set to auto, just so it fills the entire frame with respect to the padding that we set on the header. So let's align to the left and align to the top. And that's our header done. Now let's go back to our path. So let's hit O on our keyboard and draw an ellipse. And we can make it around, let's say, 1100 in size. So let's um, let's center align this and place it like in the center. And uh, what we need now is an, uh, a frame with our carousel image. So let's um, let's add a frame, make it 480. Uh, we can uh, we can leave it at 246, and let's call it carousel image. Uh, right click on the frame, go to plugins, select Unsplash and type in fashion because this will be a fashion themed landing page or like a hero section. And let's choose this one. Okay, um, we can also round those corners just so they're nice and rounded and we have our carousel image ready. So let's select both our carousel image, hold shift, click on the ellipse, right click anywhere on the canvas, go to plugins and choose the two path plugin. Now let's link our two elements together and let's uh, increase the count 
uh, to let's say six, maybe even seven, because we want to have um, we want to have like a fluid motion, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So that's fine, and let's uh, click out of this, and let's place, uh, let's rotate it a little bit, just so we have a nice starting point, and just to make sure it's aligned perfectly, uh, we can drag a ruler from the top. But let's say uh, we are happy with that, we can um, now center align this. And now we can remove the fill from our carousel. Let's move it out and this will be our starting point. Now that we have this frame ready, we can go over and then replace the images from our uh, carousel. So let's click on each one of them, go to plugins, unsplash, uh, type in fashion one more time. Make sure the orientation is set to portrait and let's choose images that match the overall vibe that we're going for here. When I can't see the images here, I'll just go over to my layers panel and then select them from the layers panel. Let's go for something bright and colorful this time. So maybe this one. And then lastly, we need, uh, let's say, let's go for this one. Awesome. So our images are replaced now and um, this will be our step number two because in the first step, we'll also create a trigger animation where our carousel images are unfolding like from a, a deck of cards, so to speak. Okay, so let's uh, copy it over one more time. And now let's give it a spin. And let's say we want to spin to the right first. So let's uh, drag it over to around this point. And then let's, um, let's copy it one more time. And this time, let's say we want to drag it to the left. And we want to go about this point. Now that I look at these frames, they look kind of boring. So let's uh, add some life to them. Let's add a text, take a spin, make the uh, weight like really bold, and then increase the size, make sure it's white, and then place it all the way behind. And we can copy and paste it on our remaining frames. We can also change the color of uh, this uh, fill. So let's pick a color from the image here, make it just a little bit uh, lighter and then do the same for this image. Uh, okay, so these two are very similar. Let me try to pick a green one. Okay, maybe like this. So let's prototype this animation first and then we'll go back to the trigger intro in the next part. So let me go over to the prototype and then click hover over this plus icon connect the first frame with the second frame and change the trigger to on drag. Make sure the, the animation is set to smart animate. And then we want to make it a custom Bezier 3000 milliseconds, which is a three second animation. And then uh, make sure that these handles are dra dragged all the way to the left and right. Now let's do the same for this one on drag. And we want to connect it back to the first frame. And also let's change the trigger to drag. But let's play it out first and see uh, if it's working. Okay, so let's take a spin and see if it's working. And it's working perfectly fine. So this part is done. Now let's go over and then create the first trigger animation. But let's change back to design and then copy it uh, this frame one more time. We can call it one. And for this to work, we will need to select each one of the images that we have sitting in this linked path group and then stack them below the main image, which is this one. And to make this work, we need to make sure that this the main image is sitting on top of all of the other images. So it's uh, first in, in order in hierarchy and then we'll make sure to stack from left to right. So this image needs to be sitting on top of that image. And if we look at the order that we have these the remaining images inside of that group, we need to make sure that they stack just right. We'll go from this one to that one, to that one, to that one, that one, and finish on these two on the bottom. So let's click on this first image and then drag it below this frame. And you can hold spacebar just to make sure you're not going outside of the, the group. Again, then rotate it a little bit, position it right behind the, the main image. And let's do it for, for the remaining images. So let's drag them over and then rotate them like, like so. 
And that's what happens when you're not holding spacebar. So just to make sure you're not going outside of your group, click on the image and hold spacebar and then release when you're sure that your position, uh, you position the image in the right place. Once again, hold spacebar, rotate, place it behind. And then let's do the same for the remaining two images. And the last one left, let's rotate it. So that's our first frame, but we want to add some animation to the text itself as well. Uh, so let's reduce the size of this text and drag it upwards, holding shift and spacebar, move it outside of view, and then double click zero on our keyboard to reduce the visibility of this layer to 0%. So let's add our text one more time, take a spin, make it wide, increase the size a little bit, and then position it right around the middle. So let's say here. And we also want to add a trigger button. So let's go for the get started button. Let's copy it over from the header, increase the size by 25%. And we, also, we can also make it um, purple, let's say, just so it stands out a little bit. <clears throat> make sure it's uh, positioned in the center. Okay, what's happening? We can slightly overlap this. And again, we, you need to make sure the button is sitting on top of the images. So option, command, and square bracket to uh, push it all the way up. And now that it's, it's, it's abstracting, like it's not really visible. So let's let's place it below the carousel, maybe push the carousel a little bit up and then try to play around with the composition just so it feels right. And let's say I also want to animate this text. So let's select it, hit command plus C, go over to the second frame, command plus V. Let's hit K on my keyboard and then, and then resize it and push it all the way down. Uh, double click zero on my keyboard and then do the same with the button. So push it down, double click zero to hide it from the frame. Let's go back to the prototype mode, select our first frame and then connect it with the second one. And we can also move the uh, animation to this point first, like the flow starting point, and we can call it animation start. So let's double check uh, this trigger and let's change it to click. Actually, we want to make our button the trigger. So let's select our button and then connect it with the second frame. Yeah, this animation looks 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 great. We might as well change the fill. You know what? Let's pick a color from her tracksuit. It doesn't look good. Yeah, you know what? I'll just go for something like this. Okay, so one more time. Let's select the first frame, click play, and then see the animation. So let's click on the get started button and let's see how the animation is looking like. So we had a, a slight transition from the uh, the colors here. Uh, that's probably because uh, the position of these images within that group is not the same as the one on the left. So what we should do first is to make sure that the images are stacking in the right order and then this animation will play out just fine. And otherwise, uh, Figma will smart animate and try to position them in the right order. So that's why it's really important to have these images stuck in the right order because otherwise you will see an animation like this where uh, cards are unfolding, but there's a, a slight transition animation where this image is changing from, um, from that one. Yeah. Anyways, let's take a spin and then see if the animation is working and it's still working perfectly fine. So now you know how to create the spinning carousel animation. And like I said, make sure to download the uh, Figma files that are added in the description of this video. And you'll find this tutorial as well as seven other uh, prototyping effects and techniques uh, that we'll be breaking down in future videos. So download it, open it up in your Figma and have a play around yourself. I hope this was helpful. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. You can always hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos and tutorials like this one. And if you'd like to see more content from me, you can always check out my Twitter or my Instagram where I post daily. The links are also added in the description of this video. And if for some reason all of this sounds too confusing for you right now, and you want to start with the basics of Figma first, you can check out my Figma mastery course. We go from the very basics like mastering the tools and then go through the more advanced techniques like auto layout and responsive design. And we finish on like a four hour long design of a fully responsive landing page where I take you from the blank canvas 
to a prototype. So make sure to check it out. The link is also in the description. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. One more time, I hope this was helpful. Stay curious, stay creative, guys. This was your agent, and I'll see you very, very soon. Goodbye.